all of you um, to, to campus this morning. I'm Katie Meadows. I teach fifth and sixth grade music, and I'm also the coordinator of middle school music. Um, today, for our winter concert, we have an amazing program for you. These students, uh, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade choirs, eighth grade soloists, as well as our middle school jazz band, our middle school orchestra, and our master singers, have been working so hard over the last few months to prepare for this um, exciting curricular event. You'll hear a little bit from each grade level um, before they perform today about how the work that they are presenting ties into their curriculum. Um, the students, in order to get up here, you can imagine, it takes so much courage um, from our soloists to our ensemble players. Um, and I think the thing that I am the most proud of and that I've seen the last couple days and I know in my classes in the last few months how well they are working together, how well they are collaborating, how well they are problem solving, um, how, how well they are taking risks and supporting one another in those moments of vulnerability. Um, something that I would like to share is that when these cool jazz cats got into the theater earlier this morning, um, they started warming up and one of them took charge and said, hey guys, let's just take it from the top. Here we go, everybody tune. And they ran through the song a couple of times, conductorless. And I looked up here and I was like, that is what we are all about here at the school. It doesn't happen in other places. So, uh, uh, but you will see it with all of our groups. I appreciate how you honor one another, how you honor the work that we have been doing together. Um, I appreciate how you respect uh, one another, how you demonstrate responsibility and compassion in here in the theater. So with that in mind, the best way you can show your support today for your peers on stage is by being fully present. That means being silent, not talking, um, keeping your feet off the seats, listening, watching, clapping between numbers. If you need to use the restroom or get a drink of water, we've already been over the students, but please wait until the number has come to an end. You may go to the bathroom and do not re-enter until the end of the next number so as not to distract the performers on stage who have worked so hard. Um, I also want to take a quick opportunity to thank a couple of people, Ms. Levante, our amazing tech Director for your support. Keeping everyone sounding and looking absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much. And also all of my colleagues in the Department of Performing Arts as well. Thank you for all that you do. Um, for your and lastly, I would like to thank Tasha Elsbach, Alyssa Allen, Erica Iglesky, uh, Dean Sherman, Dean Hildreth, and our entire middle school faculty for your support at all of our rehearsals this week. Thank you so much. music, so I would like to welcome Mr. Jill Fugach on stage with the Middle School Jazz Orchestra.
part of our year-long study of opera, the fifth grade has been hard at work examining the art form from every angle. We've been busy polishing our scripts and preparing to compose music for the world premiere of our original opera this spring. Our first musical selection, The Humming Chorus, comes from Puccini's time-honored classic, Madame Butterfly, an opera in three acts. This fall, we had the incredible opportunity to attend a final dress rehearsal of this production at the Metropolitan Opera in New York City. In this story, Lieutenant B.F. Pinkton, on leave in Japan, finds himself falling in love with the beautiful chocho san also known as Madame Butterfly. While he pursues a marriage to her, Pinkerton actually has no intention of bringing her back home to America. Rather, he leaves her behind, expecting she will marry another man. But chocho san unaware of this, patiently awaits her husband's return. Three years later, she sees Pinkerton's ship in the Nagasaki Harbor. She becomes excited, places flowers around the house, and anxiously waits his arrival. That's where the humming forest comes in. It bridges Act 2 to Act 3, <coughs> from dusk to dawn. As the large upstage chorus hums this calming tune, Madame Butterfly and her trials and Suzuki become the long overnight vigil for Lieutenant Pinkerton to come home. The humming chorus is a rare moment of calm and peace in the tragic love story of Madame Butterfly as you learn upon Pinkerton's arrival that he has remarried and returned to collect his son. The Humming Chorus is one of the most famous opera excerpts of all time. It's one of the most enchanting moments in the opera when the, otter, when the audience sees Butterfly's optimism for the last time, for it is utterly shattered by the arrival of Pinkerton and his new wife. The melody and its repetitive lulling accompaniment are as simple as a lullaby. The music textures grow richer throughout the song, and the melody becomes wider ranging and the harmony is more adventurous. After only a few phrases, the opening hush moon returns. As you can probably guess from the title, the humming chorus is usually sung on a hum. Because we are small, we will be singing it on the loop.
I Won't Grow Up come from Peter Pan, with music and lyrics composed by Mark Booth Charlap and Carolyn Lee. Peter Pan is a musical based on Scottish novelist and playwright J. M. Barrie's 1904 play of the same name. In our story, a mysterious boy named Peter Pan flies in the Darling family's nursery window and convinces Wendy, John, and Michael to go with him to a magical place <coughs> called Neverland, where he lives with the lost boys. With the help of a little pixie dust from Tinkerbell, they're able to fly away with him and encounter the real land of their imaginations and dreams. A land that will always be the home of youth and joy and liberty. A land where they'll never have to grow up. The entire band of lost boys join together to sing their anthem, I Won't Grow Up. The arrangement that we've learned is peppered with echoes and tight harmonies between our two voice parts. We hope that you've enjoyed our performance of I Won't Grow Up.
year-long study of folk music, the sixth grade has been busy studying, listening to, singing, composing, and performing working and game songs. Try to define folk music, and you will find as many answers as there are questions. Is folk music defined by its sound, its instrumentation, or is it rather a process by which we share, learn, and participate in music? We spent the fall trimester focusing on the latter path of investigation, exploring the oral traditions of American folk music, tracing themes, narratives, rhythms, melodies from the late 19th century to the present. Folk music creates the opportunity for every listener to become a performer and for every performer to become a composer and interpreter. We've had the opportunity to explore the oral tradition of sharing music and songs from our own backgrounds, and we've examined our relationship to the music we listen to as individuals and as a community. Our first selection, The Water is Wide, also called A Wally Wally, is a folk song of Scottish origin based on lyrics that date back to the 17th century. The modern lyric for The Water is Wide was consolidated and named by Cecil Sharp in 1906 from multiple older sources in the, but the same meter. This story is told from the perspective of the singer who is unable to be with a loved one. The metaphor of The Water is Wide highlights the gulf between two people. <coughs> As the verses go on, there is a strong suggestion that love, not without its challenges, conquers all in the end. In verse 3, you will hear, where love is planted, oh there it grows, it grows and blossoms like the rose, it has a sweet and pleasant smell, no flower on earth can it excel.
the inevitable result of the oral tradition is variation. With this in mind, we must remember that we can never really know a song completely. Old Dan Tucker is known as a dancing tune, and fiddlers would often sing it as they fiddled. We are grateful to be joined today by Andrew Hahn, an eighth grader who will accompany us on the fiddle part. Rhythm is perhaps the most important and exciting element in Old Dan Tucker. While the melody is simple and straightforward, it's the intense combination of rhythm and text that give each verse momentum. The refrain or chorus, Get Out the Way for Old Dan Tucker, introduces both syncopation and call and response between parts. We hope that you enjoy our final selection.
took that name in vain. I don't even know the name, but if I did, well, really, what's it to ya? There's a blaze of light in every word. It doesn't matter what you heard. The holy or the broken, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I did my best, it wasn't much, I couldn't feel, so I tried to touch, I did my best, I didn't come to fool you, and even though it all went wrong, I stare before my Lord and saw, with nothing on my tongue but music class explores cultures of the world through the lens of music. This fall we have examined music of Africa, the Caribbean, and Latin America. In Western culture, drumming is nearly always associated with entertainment. In most African communities, drums are an important part of many ceremonies such as births, harvest time, weddings, baptisms, and countless other celebrations. The seventh grade will perform Balaku, a traditional drum rhythm from Senegal. The entire seventh grade has worked hard rehearsing the staging required to perform this piece for you. It requires teamwork, focus, and musicianship.
seventh grade choir will sing, We Are the World, written by Michael Jackson and Lionel Richie. Originally recorded in 1985 with more than 50 different artists singing on the track, the song was the first ever single to be certified multi-platinum and raised over $63 million for humanitarian aid. That's equivalent to $138 million today. Following the devastation caused by the earthquake in Haiti, a remake of the song by another all-star cast of singers was recorded on February 1st, 2010. We Are the World celebrates the idea that we can all be a power for good by helping someone in need we enrich our own lives. <laughs>
eighth grade music curriculum explores the evolution of American rock music. This fall, we focus on the music of the 1950s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. The British invasion was a phenomenon that occurred in the mid-1980s when the rock and pop music acts in the United Kingdom became popular in the United States. With the advent of MTV in the 1980s, the second wave of British bands were large parts of sound that would become known as the new wave. Some bands fought their inclusion in this category, particularly U2. As the popularity of new wave music began to fade, U2 emerged with a mainstream rock identity based on excellent musicianship and lyrics that often focus on personal and sociopolitical themes. Bono, the lead singer of U2, is one of the foremost celebrity leaders who advocated for nonviolent conflict resolution and for aid to impoverished countries. The eighth grade music choir will be singing Beautiful Day by U2. Bono explained that the track is about losing everything but still finding joy in what one has. Another interpretation is the line, It is a beautiful day, is in a vision of abandoning material things and finding grace in the world itself.
Chair of the Performing Arts Department, I want to give a huge thank you. Please hold your applause until I get to the end of this list of our student leadership um, throughout the fall trimester, um, which is why they were chosen for this leadership role this week in our rehearsals and in our concert. In the fifth grade, Annie Carnavale and Matthew Hanskin. In the sixth grade, Ethan Savage and Aviv Emery. Seventh grade, Justine Ravley and Adrian Long. In the eighth grade, Olive Seraph and Oscar Santana and our two concert managers who oversee all of the grade level choir managers, Ella Mathis and Sandra Peters. I would like for you guys to please stand and thank you for all your Jennifer Carnavale, Chair of the Department of Performing Arts. So, as she mentioned, I'm Jennifer Carnavale. I'm the Chair of the Department of Performing Arts. Before we get started with our final um, thing on the program, which is a tradition for us, I want to say a big thank you on behalf of all the students to Ms. Meadows, Mr. Robeson, and Mrs. Chanella. concert by singing the round Now I Walk in Beauty. The song and traditions we have surrounding its performance are meant to express gratitude for the many, many good things the students appreciate. In no small part, thanks to you, their families, and to their teachers. One of the treasured elements of this tradition is the participation of middle school alumni who you've seen. <laughs> in our upper school at all grade levels. Some are in college, some are beyond college. Um, thank you to our alums for making the time to attend today. I know it's not easy to fit it into the upper school schedule and make it work. Um, and we are grateful for all of you, middle school students, upper school students, for the way in which you enrich our lives. Um, it makes us grateful for the work that we do. We deeply appreciate you. So I'd like to invite the middle school alums to come up on stage and stand on the rise.
here is I'd like to introduce Ms. L. Bach, who is the head of the middle school. beautiful high schoolers. Thank you so much for joining us. It's uh, in my second year. It's wonderful to look around and not only recognize so many faces from the upper school, but also to know so many of you. So um, thank you for joining us. What a beautiful way to end and to launch us into winter break in just a few hours. Um, I want to thank the Performing Arts Department. Uh, this was an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous, and inspiring concert. So let's give everyone an all the performers. What I love about um, some of the themes of today is the idea of community and the idea that each one of us um, can and has a responsibility to make the world a better place. And whenever we head towards a new year, uh, we do think about what can be different, what can change. And each one of you has tremendous power just within your own world to make a difference in somebody's life. Um, and I just, I, I want you just to remember how important friendships are and family is. And um, the expression, love makes a family, um, has really, really been highlighted for me in the most recent weeks. And I just want everyone to keep that in mind, that family is, are the people who you embrace, who you bring into your world and your circle, and who you maintain those relationships with. It's not just mom, dad, siblings. So again, love makes a family, and this time of the year, it's so important to remember that. So any gesture you make, and I'm talking about fifth graders up to adults, those small gestures, reaching out to people, checking in on folks, and um, just inviting people into your home, it makes such a difference. So, and, and I think that radiates out to the rest of the world. So. Have a fantastic break. Let me give you a little bit of logistical rundown for the afternoon. Um, we have lunch now. Students, we are off to the dining hall. Uh, parents, I don't know if we have room for you, but if you are hungry and need to join your child, go for it. We welcome you. And then we actually are proceeding with classes for the rest of the day. And then last period, um, each grade is doing something special. Several grades are doing community service activities today, and um, we thank those of you who made contributions and thank students in advance for the work that they're gonna do to help others. So again, it's lunch, and then you have class starting at 12.20. All right, check with your advisors if you're Thank you.